Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I want to give you a quick update on how the progress is going with the Intel Arc A380. For those that follow my Twitter feed, this is no surprise, but earlier this month, I purchased one of these Gunnier Photon A380s off JD.com. I thought it would be a relatively quick and easy video to make before the new CPUs launch later this year. Unfortunately, things didn't pan out as I had initially hoped, and it's a little bit more complicated than I thought, hence why you haven't seen a Scattermancer video pop up on this channel. Two weeks ago, I teased the GPU overclocked to 3.1 GHz on my Twitter. So in this video, I want to give you a quick update on what challenges exist with these cards and how far I got working around the issues. The first challenge that A380 owners are very familiar with is the limited overclocking tools available in the driver software package. As Tech Power Up points out in their review of the Gunnier A380, while GPU overclocking is available within the Arc Control software package, it's a reasonably limited implementation. First, GPU overclocking itself is in the form of a percentage overclock rather than the actual frequency. Furthermore, this percentage doesn't really reflect the actual frequency increase. Setting plus 31% in the driver software results in a GPU frequency overclock of about 10% from 2450 MHz to 2696 MHz. Second, while a GPU voltage slider is available, it's not doing anything. Third, there are no memory overclocking options available. Fourth, there is a working option available to adjust the power limit. But again, the implementation isn't very straightforward as it's a GPU only measurement instead of a total board power measurement. In addition, there's limited to zero information available from Intel on the GPU clocking or voltage topology. In the next few minutes, I'll review some of my findings and thoughts on the A380 topology. Please note that none of this is confirmed directly by Intel, so it might be wrong. So take it for what it is. Intel has a lot of experience building graphics engines. You'll find an Intel GPU inside most of the desktop and mobile processors. At first thought, you'd assume that the discrete GPU clocking works the same way as on the integrated graphics. I've done a few Intel iGP overclocking videos in the past, so if you want more information on that, feel free to check out Scatterbencher 28, 33 or 38 with the UHD 750, 770 or 730. Long story short, the IGP frequency is derived from a 100 MHz base clock frequency, first divided by 2 and then multiplied by a slice ratio. For Alder Lake integrated graphics, the maximum slice ratio is 42, so the maximum IGP frequency is 2.1 GHz before base clock adjustments. The IGP can overclock to almost 2.4 GHz with base clock frequency adjustments. The discrete GPU clocking works totally different. In fact, from what I've gathered, it kind of works like NVIDIA GPUs. With special software tools, you can extract from the driver a voltage frequency curve. In the driver, we find 130 distinct VF points defined, ranging from 300 MHz to 2450 MHz. That said, from testing, it appears the curve extends beyond 250 MHz. The GPU supports two types of overclocking, offset mode and lock mode. In offset mode, you can offset the factory fused voltage frequency curve by a specific frequency or voltage. The behavior is similar to NVIDIA graphics cards in that increasing the voltage offset also increases the maximum operating frequency. On an NVIDIA graphics card, the reliability voltage, VREL, defines the maximum warranted voltage. The maximum voltage, VMAX, is the highest voltage that AIB partners can enable on their products. On NVIDIA cards, a percentage slider enables the range beyond VREL up to VMAX. Similarly, on the A380, increasing the offset moves you up along the factory fused voltage frequency curve. It gives you access to VF points with higher voltage and frequency. In lock mode, you can override the highest available VF point within the warranted range, in this case 2450 MHz, with a manual voltage and frequency. 
With the help of Shamino and after many troubleshooting attempts, we built a custom tool that allowed us to try out both methods. For the time being, I won't share the tool publicly yet for two reasons. One, I'm not sure to what extent the tools contain proprietary information, so I want to be on the safe side. Two, the tool is in a very rough implementation state and you must be extremely careful setting voltage and frequencies. Otherwise, you risk running almost two volt through the GPU as I did at some point. I can be very brief on the memory overclocking front. It's not supported, at least not according to the information that we can extract via the driver where it is explicitly stated that memory overclocking is not supported. With the overclocking software tool problem solved, one would imagine that it's smooth sailing from here. Well, not so quick. Even though our tool provides us with the frequency and the voltage control range that we need to push this card to the limit, there's still the power limitation. The power limit definition for the Intel discrete GPUs is very similar to the architecture on the CPU side. There's a PL1, PL2 and PL4. PL1 is the long-term sustained power limit, PL2 is the short-term burst power limit and PL4 is the peak power limit. These three power definitions have associated throttle mechanisms that trigger when the limit is surpassed. The GPU has other throttle mechanisms related to temperature and power supply stability, but these are not relevant right now. PL1 and PL2 are set to 65W by default and can be increased to 97.5W via the driver interface. With specialized tools, however, you can increase these values to well over 250 watt if needed. PL4 is set to 800 watt by default and cannot be increased even with specialized tools. Unfortunately, it's the PL4 limit that is the blocking limit that's preventing me from finishing this Scatterbencher video. You can find the PL4 limit throttle flag in hardware info. When the PL4 limit is triggered, the GPU driver will automatically reduce the operating frequency. So even when I have the GPU clocked at 3.1 GHz, because the PL4 limit is triggered, the actual frequency during a 3D load is throttled to about 2.3 GHz. I've tried many things to work around the PL4 limit, but unfortunately I've yet to find a viable solution. To give you some idea about the thought process, Here's how I approached the issue. We actually know quite a lot about Intel's power limits from the CPU side of their business. Therefore, we know that PL4 is the ultimate safeguard against peak power spikes and that this is a limit that can never be exceeded. What we don't know, however, is how this PL4 limit is implemented on their discrete GPUs. There are several options. Maybe the power limit is implemented like on high-end NVIDIA graphics cards. Here a separate IC reports the 12 volt input power to the GPU by measuring the input voltage and voltage drop over a shunt resistor. In this case, we should be able to work around the power limitation by shunt modding. Alternatively, it may work similarly to AMD graphics cards. Here, the VRM controller reports electrical information such as measured voltage and current back to the GPU via the SVI2 interface. In this case, we should be able to work around the issue by disabling this voltage controller function. For more information on this, you can check out Scatterbench with the RX 6500 XT. Another alternative is that the power limit is implemented like on low-end NVIDIA graphics cards. Here the power is an internal estimate based on the GPU VID request to the voltage controller and an internal current estimate based on actual GPU load. In this case, we should be able to work around the power limitation by forcing the GPU to use a low VID and manually increasing the output voltage. For more information on this, you can check out Scatterbench with the GeForce GT 1030. The first option can be evaluated by checking the physical PCB for any shunt resistors or additional ICs. There are none present and that actually makes sense because it would add a substantial cost to the PCB design. The second option can be evaluated by checking the voltage controller datasheet. 
The GPU voltage controller on the Gunnier A380 is the Monolithic Power Systems MP2940A. Unfortunately, the datasheet is not publicly available. However, since the controller is widely used on Intel motherboards by a variety of motherboard vendors, I got my hands on the necessary details anyway. Since the voltage controller supports a PM bus interface, we can talk to the controller using the Elmo Labs EVC2 device. A special thanks goes out to the Elmo Labs Discord user WhiteShark for helping me set up the device support. To make a long story short, it was relatively straightforward to set up the PM bus communication and get the voltage controller functions to work. While the controller definitely supports functions to feedback information, it doesn't seem like there's any information relayed from the controller back to the GPU. So the second option is also off the table. As it would take quite a lot of time to go through how the third option works on low-end NVIDIA graphics cards, I will refer you to Scatterventure number 40, where I took the time to explain it in great detail. The long story short is that we cut the communication line between the GPU and the voltage controller. As a result, we can force the GPU to boot at a low voltage, usually around 0.6 volt, and manually adjust the output voltage via the voltage controller by manipulating the feedback circuit. And here's where my progress grinds to a halt as I've simply not been able to work out how to make this work. There are two parts of this challenge that needs to be addressed. One, can the GPU boot up if the ISFIT connection with the voltage controller is cut? And if yes, what is that boot voltage? And two, can I modify the voltage controller to gain manual control over the voltage output without triggering any electrical protections? I currently have no answers for either question, so as I said, my progress has ground to a halt. So what are my next steps? Well, there's still a couple. Ideally, I would find a way to override the PL4 limit using a software tool. Some tools can override PL4, but I only have access to tools that can lower the limit for now. If that doesn't work, I can continue to work on the voltage hardware modification method. However, I will need to look for expert assistance to make any progress. A far out alternative is vBIOS modding. While I did manage to make a dump of the BIOS, I have minimal experience with modding it. Also, the BIOS would likely need a valid digital signature, just like with Nvidia and AMD graphics cards. Suppose somehow I managed to get around that PL4 throttling problem. In that case, the next step will undoubtedly be to find a solution for the overheating two-phase VRM. Quick test showed me that the VRM hits over 90 degrees Celsius in 3D load, even with low voltages. One option is to get a hold of the Bixki full cover water block for this graphics card and liquid cool the VRM. So as you can see, I'm not out of options or ideas yet, but I don't expect to resolve any of this in the very near future. So please don't expect a Scatterbencher video next week. Anyway, that's it for this video. As I said, once I work out all of the problems, I'll be sure to put up a Scatterbencher video with all of the details and all of the information. Um, if not soon, then likely my next video will be a CPU overclocking guide. Uh, I want to thank my Patreon supporters for supporting my work. And as per usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and see you next time.